Welcome. So this question says an LRC circuit consists of a, let's draw it, there's our power supply. We have an inductor, we have a resistor, and we have a capacitor. And this is going to be a 0.2 N inductor, and we have a 4 ohm capacitor, and we have a 6 microfarad, with a 4 ohm resistor, and a 6 microfarad capacitor. And this power supply is working at 900 radians per second. Now, we calculated previously using the um, Omega naught equals 1 over the square root of L times C. And if we work that out, that would be 1 over the square root of 0 0.2 times 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And if I just reiterate that, let's work that out again. So we go 0 0.2 times... 6 second e to the minus 6, enter, and then I go second square root second answer, enter, and then I go inverse of that, enter. This is 913. So the resonant frequency is 913 radians per second. And I want to know what the impedance and phase angle of this circuit is at 900 radians per second. So basically, I'm saying, look, here's a, if you like, uh, let's, let's, let's do the impedance locking. So basically, I'm going to get an impedance, and the impedance is going to look something like that. And the resonant frequency occurs when you're at the, the minimum impedance, which is the minimum resistance for that combination. And I've just gone to one side of it, so I'm slightly off resonance. And what I will see, if I look at my, if I remember my phaser diagram, I have a inductive reactance which leads in the phaser diagram. I have a resistance which comes 90 degrees later, and I have a a capacitive reactance which follows in the phasor diagram and resonance occurs when my inductive reactance cancels out my capacitive reactance and uh, that would be at 913 radians per second but I'm only at 900 and so I'm going to get a situation where my uh, um, uh, inductive reactance is going to be slightly less than my capacitive reactance and so my resultant will be, let's draw this in a different color, my resultant would be uh, that minus that would give me that. And I'm going to end up with something where my z value is the resultant of this. And my phase angle is the angle between the resistance direction and my resultant uh, uh, impedance direction. That's where I'm going. <laughs> so now, <laughs> let's go there. So uh, what I say <laughs> is that my um, inductive reactance equals omega L. And in this case, that means it equals 900 times 0 0.2 which is 180 ohms. And another principle is that my capacitive reactance is 1 over omega C. And in this case, that equals 1 over 900 times 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And that equals uh, 900 times 6 second e to the minus 6 equals and then I got to do the inverse of that so inverse of that equals and I'm getting 185 so that's 185 so the XL vector is 180 
ohms long and the XC vector is 185 ohms long. Why don't I draw that a bit better because it's a it's a useful construction. So let's draw that a bit better. So what I have is my XL value. I'm going to exaggerate a bit. My XC value is a bit longer than that. And then here's my resistance value. And so when I sum those two guys vertically, I end up with that as XL minus XC. And then when I put those two guys together and say, let's figure out what's going on here, my vector sum is that guy. And that's my Z. And then there's my phase angle. So I'm looking for the Z, I'm looking for my phase angle. So the interesting thing here is I can't just add my resistances and my impedances uh, arithmetically, like, like they're sums. I've got to act, add them like they're vectors, and we call that you know a phasor relationship. Okay, but we can do it. And so we say, well, my z is equal to the square root of r squared plus it's going to be xl minus xc squared. And if I put numbers in, that equals the square root of 4 squared plus 180 minus 185 all squared. So z is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus minus 5 squared, which equals the square root of 16 plus 25, which equals the square root of 41, which equals uh, second square root 41 equals, it's going to be 6.4 ohms. So that's interesting. I have big resistances. I have uh, basically 180 ohms associated with my XL. I have 185 ohms associated with my XC. And they're cancelling each other. They're not adding, they're cancelling each other. And when I work out the entire uh, Z, the impedance, I get 6.4. So now if I look at this, let's draw this out a bit bigger as well. So now, this is 6.4 ohms. And this is 4 ohms. That's my resistance. And here's my Z. And there's my phi. I can tell you the angle is going to be greater than 45 because this is only 4 and this is 6.4. How do I find the angle? I say, well, let's go to a red pen so you know it's a principle. So I say that the angle is equal to tan to the minus 1 of xl minus xc divided by r. So now I can put numbers in, and I can go, well, that is equal to 10 to the minus 1 of 180 minus 185 over 4, which equals 10 to the minus 1 of minus 5 over 4. So phi is equal to second tangent minus phi divided by 4, larger brackets equals, it's going to be minus 51.3 degrees. And that negative sign just means you're below the, you're below the R value, it just means it's on, it's on the lower side as opposed to the upper side.
So, we basically were able to use our three component values, and we had a specific frequency that we were dealing with, and we worked out what our inductive reactance is in ohms. We worked out what our capacitive reactance was in ohms. We were able to relate them through a phasor diagram and add them victorially, and we saw that the XC was pretty much was, the XL was pretty much cancelling out a lot, but not all of the XC. We were able to use Pythagoras' theorem to give us our overall in, a res, a resistance value at this frequency, which we call our impedance. We were able to work out the value for that impedance, and then by again referring to our phasor diagram, we were able to work out the phase angle, the angle that for this frequency <coughs> separates the phase of my the the uh, um, yeah the phase of my impedance versus the phase of my uh, 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 resistance, um, and there we have it.